Oh, hello. I'm Mark Bikert, Editor-in-Chief of Playbill, and you are tuned in to today's episode of Stream Stealers, the twice-a-week series where I get to talk to some of my favorite film and TV performers about their film and TV projects, of course, but also about their sometimes surprising theater background. Now, in the case of today's guest, his theater background is not at all surprising. Most of his Wikipedia page is devoted to it, giving short shrift to Hulu's The Handmaid's Tale. Uh, Ochi Fekbenle is here today to talk about his new Hulu series, that is the Andal pronunciation, uh, Max, which is hilarious and very exciting and has Chris Maloney, so that's always a bonus. Uh, let's bring Ochi on. Ochi. Yeah. Welcome. Thank welcome you. to Dream Stealers. Uh, so you're chilling in, uh, you're chilling off the coast of Africa. As you do. You know, my mom moved here about seven years ago on work and then like fell in love with it, stayed. Then Armageddon took place. And so I thought I should probably join her, you know, when the world was ending. So this is how I ended up in Tanzania. It's beautiful. So I was just talking about this the other week when I had Harry Lloyd, who's on Peacock's Brave New World. And we were mm. talking about the Aldous Huxley dystopian novel and telling a dystopian story. Right. Which did for several seasons with... Uh, the Handmaid's Tale. Right. Weird to watch dystopian stories because they cannot compare to what we are living through. You know what? I'm actually, weirdly enough, a big fan of the dystopian genre of Brave New World. I love um, The Stand, which they're also making a TV show of. Um, and, and it is a bit bizarre. I mean, I do find myself going, hmm, they never thought that would happen. But um, I, I do wonder if we've kind of in some kind of glitch. I wonder what happened to the real version of reality because we're on some roller coaster other branch. Yes. Like we we all took the wrong pill and yeah. we are all actually like asleep somewhere and all of this is a dream. I sometimes think the writers of the TV series The World have gone, they've gone too far this season. It just, the characters are unbelievable. They're a little bit overblown. There's too many storylines all at once. They need to chill out. They keep introducing plot points that never go anywhere. Murder horror. Yeah. Well, yeah. Murder horrors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at one point there was, there's swarms of locusts coming to, to East Africa. And then there's the pandemic, and then, you know, there's obviously the civil unrest, and just, it's wild. It's a wild time. You know, there's a Chinese proverb. It's like a curse, which is, may you live in interesting times. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go. I mean, it feels like a Ryan Murphy series, if we're going to get <laughs> Yeah. One of the later episodes of Nip Tuck, perhaps. Yeah, exactly, where they was just like... They're on the fentanyl. Now, speaking of people who write TV shows, uh, but you do a much better job, Max, which is now yeah. on you, is your baby, and you someone paid you, commissioned it from you, right? Some crazy person gave me money to make a TV show, and I put Chris Maloney in a kilt. Yeah, serves you right. You should have known it. I was going to do something crazy like that. Um... So yeah, 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 I made this TV show. It's about this pop star who, like he was big back in the day, then he's trying to, then, then his career went, because of obviously drugs and, and mental health and, and weirdness. And so his career goes downhill and now he's trying to make a comeback to win back his, his ex-girlfriend, as you do. His uh, supermodel ex-girlfriend. Yes, Jordan Dunn, who is like the UK's biggest model She's, she's in it, and she's really funny, actually, which is annoying. Like, should you really be very beautiful and funny? It's a bit much, do you know what I mean? But she's deeply unpleasant, right? Yeah, 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 no one wants to be around her, but yeah, uh, no, she's actually lovely as well. It's just annoying, it's whatever. It's fine, I'm over it. So did they bring you the premise, or were you just having talks and you were like, I don't know, what if I played a washed up boy band star who tries to make <laughs> Yeah, basically, in a way, actually, I pitched another show, right, which is like this teen comedy. And they were like, well, will you be in it? And I was like, there's not really a part for me in this teen comedy. And they were like, oh, and I was like, well, if you really want me to be in something, then I'll write something for me. And then I came up with this washed up boy band idea. Um, and they were like, yeah. That, and I was like, really? OK, sure. And then we started, they gave us money and we made the pilot. Me and my brother, my younger brother is the exec producer on it. So like a, a bro team. 
And um, and yeah, we made the pilot. They loved that. And now we've made a series that's going to be on Hulu, July 28th. I mean, it's, it's so funny. And it's so... Oh, thanks. It's my favorite kind of humor because the specificity makes it universal. <laughs> right. Like, so very much specific to a 90s boy band member. Right, right. Fall from Grace. Down to he adopted a child. Yeah, yeah, a little Indian boy. And I mean, I mean, he's not actually Indian, I think he's Turkish. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think people will really relate to it and recognize it. But you know, I, I think outside of like that thing we recognize about these like celebrities who are overblown and crazy and do weird things, there's something about, I think all of us, which are like, you know, if you're on social media and you're getting these likes through and it's just like, if you're not getting the likes, it's, it's horrible. And when you're getting the likes, it's raining likes on you. And, and, and we're, we're like, we've kind of gone into this world where we all need this validation. And so Max is like the prototypical validate me so I know I exist. And, and, and that's, that's part of what I wanted to talk about. I mean, it's so... And you are so, so funny, which is not a surprise oh, thanks. for been paying attention. But for anyone who maybe only knows you from The Handmaid's Tale, you don't have yeah. a, you don't have a ton of colors to play in The Handmaid's Tale. No, and I pitched a couple of musical numbers as well, and they've been shot down every time. That's so weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, Elizabeth Moss famously was Baby Louise in The Bette Midler Gypsy on TV. Hello. Hello. We can't forget it. She, and so, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're we're missing out. Basically, write letters to the producers and just let them know that you want these musical numbers. But yeah, no, you're right. I, I it's really, handmaids are so serious all the time. And then before that, I've been doing a couple of dramas for Sky and the BBC, and 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 I've I've always enjoyed comedy. So I, I was I'm you know I was bang up for doing something a bit stupid. And Max is stupid in the best possible way. I have to say. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I wanted to make something which is just fun. Like you could just watch it and it's funny. But I also like there's some there are kind of some deeper issues that I wanted to look at in a kind of comedic way. So we kind of touch on some some bigger themes as well. Well, and the the woman who ends up working directly with Max trying to get him uh, trying to get yeah. him back, deals with a lot of sexism and racism in the. Yeah. So, yeah. You. It's the Trojan Horse show, which is my favorite type of show. Exactly. Slip it to them while they're laughing. But, um, you know, yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, we, I didn't want to smash people over the head with it, you know. And so it's everything. I, I hope that people's experience of it is very funny. But, I, like, I was always inspired by The Simpsons, right? You know, like one of the greatest TV shows ever. And you're laughing, but then you're paying attention. You're like, they just said some deep ish. Like, you know, and, and, and that's, that's kind of the thing I hope to create. Yeah. Well, and how did you how did you get Chris Maloney involved? You know what? I mean, that my brother Luti uh, is extraordinary executive producer. He he might make music videos for like Kanye and Stoop. So he's used to just making stuff happen. If they make a request, you make it happen. And so he said to me, "Who do you want?" And I was like, "Look, let's not get ridiculous. We're making like a low budget British TV show. We're not going to get anybody, Luti." And he was like, "Who do you want?" I was like, "All right, fine. I want Chris Maloney." And next thing I know, Chris had read the script and he came. This is going to be a humble brag warning, humble brag warning. And, uh, and Chris was like, this script, this part is why I want to be an actor. Like it's, it's playing roles. That's what he said. It was the biggest compliment of my life. And I'm going to repeat it as many times as I can. So suck it up. <laughs> and, um, and, and yeah, and, and, and basically, but if you watch the show, you can see why. Because he smashes the living daylights out of it. He kills it so hard. You've not seen Chris like this before. So, you know, you're welcome. It's, I mean, again, killed. Uh, it's, it's the kind of role that could so easily tip over into ludicrous or... Right, or false, like, right. Like some, some actors just, some actors cross the ocean to indulge right. himself. And really exactly. Because no one in America will see it. Right. But it's actually a very smart, very incisive performance about this kind of music and illusion. Yeah, he plays it on a pinhead, and it's just, you know, it's. I, I think lots of people would be surprised by it, and um, yeah, I'm excited. I want him to win awards. Well, and you, we were talking beforehand. You, you always wanted to do theater. Like theater was the thing that you did. 
And you actually have a more extensive theater background than people might be aware of. Yeah, years and years and years of theater. Yeah, I mean, and also incidentally, I, I started theater, like professional theater, performing live in front of people at 15, 16. I was doing African theater for a couple of years before I went into drama school. And then when I graduated, I didn't even think about doing TV and film. I, I just, it wasn't, I didn't think I was above it. I just, to be honest, actually, I didn't, th I didn't think there was a place for me. You know, it's so hard to think this now, right? Because you've got black British stars like Daniel Kaluuya and Chiwetel Ejiofor and David Oyelowo. When I graduated drama school, there was not a black British actor that was known in America, really. Like, like a movie star, black Brit? Yeah. No one. And so it, it wasn't really in my consciousness when I graduated. I, but I knew, I knew black theatre actors. And... Um, and so, yeah, that was why I, I pursued and, and, you know, yeah. And just, I, what I'm obsessed with is you've got the range. Ah, oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Here's Hi. What? Uh, six degrees of separation. Mm -hmm. And then you got rave reviews. You worked with Trevor Nunn on Porgy and Bess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which is wild. Yeah. Yeah. That was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life. Yeah, because you know I'm not like a singer. Like I can hold a note, right? But but like I'm not. No one's gonna hear me sing and be like, "Oh my god, when's the album coming out?" That's not gonna happen. And but I can hold a note. And and so I just had to act the living daylights out of these songs. And and so when I got the part, literally every day in rehearsals, I was like, "This is the day they're gonna fire me because I can't sing it." <laughs> and uh, and they never did. And, and I got to do the show. And and I've got to say, like. Singing with an orchestra was one of the most, I don't know, out of body, multi-dimensional experiences I've ever had in my life. It was, it was just, just a brilliant experience. Well, and like working with Trevor Nunn on a musical is basically getting a master class. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was fascinating. Well, I think what was really interesting about working with Trevor is that he would be like, okay, so I want you to sit there and then on that line, go over there and, and do that. And then on that line, go over there and do that. And I remember coming home to my then girlfriend every day and being like, Matt, I don't, I don't know how to work like this. Like I, I'm an experimenter, but he's being very like particular about it. So anyway, one day in rehearsals, I was just like, he told me I should go over there. And then one day I just, I just went over there and I carried on doing my stuff. I was waiting for him to like tear me a new one, but he didn't say anything. And I was like, okay, well, I'll do this. And then, and, then, and then I'll do that. And then what happens if I do that? And then, you know, within the, by the end of the day, I was just doing anything that came to my head. And he was just letting me run with it. And this went on for weeks and weeks of rehearsals where like part of my process is just doing anything that comes to my head. And he just gave me so much range for, you know, leash until, you know, one time I think I did something. Like, I was like, I'm going to push the boat. And he was like, no, don't do that. And I was like, okay, <laughs> good, good. There are walls around this. And so... It was really interesting because he's got a very specific idea of what he wants. And I think he's really willing to prescribe it. But if you've got ideas, he also is willing to absorb it. And, and I think that's part of what makes him brilliant. Yeah, I mean, that's what everybody wants from a leader is someone yeah. who's actually going to lead, but be open to other yeah. versions. Yeah. Now, that being said, I hope that you're going to release an album as Max. <laughs> we do have a couple of songs actually that we're thinking of releasing. There's some funny ones and some sweet ones. And so, yeah, I don't know. You know, I mean, I think, I think it's more just because some fans might want it, you know, we'll see if there's a demand for it. I mean, look, we all have the time. There is no, excuse for <laughs> there's no excuse for you and your brother to not get a zoom background <laughs> situation and film some music videos. Mm, I'm ready for it. I got my ring light now, you know, uh -huh. I'm not going to embarrass myself. Can you make, ask another question? Make all of your dreams come true. Uh, great. Um, so. But, very well. Uh, so, I have to ask, because, actually, uh, before I ask my favorite final question, I have another question. Uh, are there any organizations or charities that you want to draw attention to right now during Armageddon? Thank you very much. I have a charity called the ABC Foundation. And the, um, you can find it on Instagram, ABC Foundation, or online, ABC found, abcfoundation.me. I didn't choose that. It was the only thing that was left. And uh, what we do is we focus on giving tech access to young women in Africa. Um, right now, we're working in Zimbabwe. And um, 
we we've we've partnered with a group there called the Induna Girls, and they provide tech training, solar panel, you know, tech hubs where they learn robotics. But also importantly, actually, for a lot of the young women there, they learn how to use Word. They they learn how to create a CV. They learn how to apply for a job online. Like things that we take for granted. I think for a lot of people who don't have tech access out there, it's it's game changing. And so um, so that's what we're we're doing. And all the money, you know, we're a small charity. All the money that people donate that goes to the people. So all the logistical costs, all the bureaucratic bureaucratic costs, I cover those. And so. Oh, wow. So, so that's my contribution. So, so anything anyone gives, that's going to the people. And so, yeah, ABC Foundation. That's awesome. Mm. I'm going to add that to Playbill's list of Black Lives Matter resources. Oh, thanks. Great. Yeah, I'd love that. Happy to. Uh, also, what have you been watching in quarantine? Well, um, I've been watching some old movies. I actually watched the Swiss Family Robinson uh, the other day. Uh, amazing movie. Touched too much on animal cruelty. It didn't age well, but um, incredible. Well, no, to I see. think it's okay. Ostriches like it if you like. <laughs> it. At one point, there was a dog. There were two dogs fought a tiger, and I, I turned to my brother. I was like, uh, "How did they do that? There was no CGI. That was interesting, uh, to say the least." But um, yeah, so we were having some movie nights. Um, you know, I tell you a movie I recommend: Inside Out. I love that movie. It's a it's a kids movie, but it's so clever. Um, so yeah, so I've been watching some of that. Oh, and I've started watching. Um, uh, I may kill you. You may destroy me. Oh yeah. Um, I, I I've known Michaela a long, 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 long time, and uh, I'm I'm I, I think she's amazing. And so everyone should check that out. Nice. That one's on my list. I'm I've just been like trying to catch up on all the stuff for work because I right Max and Brave New World, and then if you have a chance, it just premiered on Stars, but Katori Hall adapted her play Pussy Valley into Pea Valley. Oh, wow, sick. Oh, it's so good. Oh, I, oh well, man, I'm excited now. Wait, but tell me, Brave New World, just be honest, just me and you, no one else is listening. Wow, what did you think of it? Is it good? I love it. I love it. Oh, great. Oh, great, great, great. Because I'm a big fan of the book, so it's just scary for me, you know? So they, they take liberties. There is an adaptation. Things change. Good. But in the, Dude. like, always true to the intent of the book. Great. I mean, and I mean, a lot of the changes are making such and such an old white guy into like a twenty-something black woman. Right. Right. I'm, I'm all for it. Yeah. Thank you. I'm tired yeah. of old. <laughs> it's the best part, you know. Mix it up. Uh, and then, well, I think that all I need from you now is you have to decide what you're going to do on Broadway and then make it happen. Oh right. Yeah. Basically. You know what? The, 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 the part I'd really love to play, I'd really love to do a Raisin in the Sun, honestly. Um, I would love that. Uh, that's, my, that, that, that's, 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 that's probably my, my dream next part that I would love to do on Broadway. Uh, Outside of that, maybe like a little coward, yeah. A one-man version of Raisin in the Sun, right? Yeah, come on. No, I don't want anyone else getting any credit. I was going to say, <laughs> very specific about the reviews. You're all about the reviews. Everyone knows that. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you a really embarrassing story. Oh, God. I don't know why I decided to share this. But I, um, when I was doing, I was doing a musical. I can't remember what it was. Uh, anyway, someone had given me this bad view, right? I, it was it was a, it was a tepid review. They said that my voice wasn't up to the challenge or whatever, and um and it was burn I was him. new I burn, was, him. I, burn him. I was new to email, and so I didn't know that my name gets sent along. So I emailed the reviewer, and I was like, "Well, look, I think you've been a bit unfair, really." <laughs> and he emailed back, and he was like, "Dear Ot, I'm sorry that you feel I was unfair." I was like, "Oh no, bury me." Bury me now, make it all end. Anyway, so that's an embarrassing and story. The most embarrassing part of that story is that it happened last year, and that's the first year you used email. Yeah, that's why I started the tech charity because I was like, no one needs to go through this. Uh <laughs> it was actually a charity for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the of ABC. 
Oh, man. Uh, thank you for joining me today. And guys, uh, check out Max on Hulu because it is a really, really good time and it's smart and funny and uh, so shocking if people only know you as Luke on Handmaid's Tale. It is uh, really, really jarring experience in the best way possible. Uh, thanks, man. It's been a real pleasure chatting with you. Oh, I've enjoyed it immensely. Bye. Thank you.